today. Holy Spirit, help us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Please, just we just allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and lead us as we share the word this morning. People don't know that they are carrying a curse. But it doesn't matter the curse that you are carrying. There is a blessing that can swallow it. Psalm 127 from verse 1 and verse 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wicked, but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. The Amplified Version says, Except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman keeps wakes but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to take rest late, to eat the bread of anxious toil, for he gives blessings to his beloved in their sleep. Everywhere there is a toil and a labor in vain. The blessing of God that terminates every toiling take over from today in the name of Jesus. You will know if you are under a curse, if you are laboring, and what you are getting is in vain. And that is why I want you to know this morning that the Bible says he gives his blessings to his own, to his beloved, when they are what? When they are sleeping. So when they wake up, they don't go around toiling they wake up to only harvest. As the Lord God of heaven liveth, you will harvest. Amen. The good news Bible says it this way. It is useless. I'm reading the verse 2. It says it is useless to work so hard for a living. Getting up early and going to bed late. For the Lord provides for those he loves while they are asleep. While they are what? Asleep. I pray this morning one more time that God will provide for you. We bless you. In your sleep in the name of Jesus. It was while Adam was sleeping that he brought his wife. In Deuteronomy 28, the Bible says in verse 12, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in its season and to bless all the work of thy hand and thou shalt lend unto many nations and thou shalt not borrow. The new living says you will lend to many nations. You will never need to borrow. Uh, you know, sometimes you can decide not to borrow and be suffering but because they've told you the borrower is servant to the lender. You need it, but you decide not to. But you are going to pay. The Bible says you will not need to. 
the situation that we pressure you to say go and borrow, it will not arise. But what is he going to do to make sure that situation will never arise? He said he will bless the work of what? Whose hands will be blessed? Whose work will be blessed? What I'm simply saying is the reason why you are toiling and you are not getting the results you think you should get is because there is a blessing that is lacking. And anywhere a blessing is lacking, a curse is there. And many people don't know they are living under a curse. Genesis chapter 4. Cain killed his brother Abel. God asked him, where is thy brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? And the Bible said, God placed a curse upon Cain. Read from verse 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which had opened thy mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee a strength, a fugitive, and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. I pray for you this day. Every curse that has been pronounced over the work that you do, the blessing of God that terminates those curses, may those blessings come upon you in the name of Jesus. Look at what the New Living says of that verse 12. He said, no longer will the ground yield good crops for you. He said, no matter how hard you work, from now on, you will be a homeless wanderer on the earth. People think it is relocation that will bring a blessing to them. But I want you to know, Bible says in Psalm 1, when you read in verse 3, he said, whatsoever that man does, whatsoever he do it, he shall prosper. It is not your location that is the problem. It's not even the environment that is not letting you blessed. People of God, is because there is a curse that is following that individual. But I am here to announce to you today, every curse that has been following you, Oh, you have been working hard, but you are not seeing results. You have been laboring day and night. You rise up early, you sleep late. Child of God, every toil that has not allowed you to be blessed, I pray that that curse is canceled today in the name of Jesus. Oh, have you seen they said it will be a wanderer? Have you seen people running around, going from pillar to post, from the north to the south, from the east to the west? So people have been doing that for the last 10 years of their life, and they have nothing to show for it. People of God, what makes rich is not running around. What makes rich is not hard labor. What makes rich? The Bible said the blessing of God make it rich and it added no sorrow. People of God, I am saying to someone today, every blessing that needs to make you rich that has not yet been pronounced over you, I stand in my office as your spiritual father and I release that blessing upon you in the name of Jesus. How do you know a man carrying a curse is the man who is toiling and toiling and toiling and toiling and yet he has nothing to show for it. But I pray today, whatsoever has brought toil into your life, it ceases in the name of Jesus. I say that toil ceases in the name of Jesus. In 1 Chronicles chapter 4, when you read in verse 9 to 10, 
In the New King James, the Bible says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wilt bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand will be with me, that you will keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. Now, in the New King James that I just read, the reason why Jabez was asking that God would bless him is in the last sentence, that I may not cause pain. What Jabez was saying is, I've been causing people pain. I want to stop causing people pain. He was causing people pain from the womb. Even when his mother was giving birth to him, he caused the woman pain. The woman decided to call his name Jabez, a causer of pain. And that name stuck with him all his life. Maybe at this time, Jabez was 45. And at that age, you can imagine how many people he had caused pain. Caused his wife pain, caused his children pain, caused his family pain, caused his brothers pain. And maybe he was in a church, not ICB. Caused the people pain. But the Bible says a day came that Jabez said, Oh, that you will bless me so that I will stop causing people pain. Mm. The NIV version has it differently. He said in verse 10, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you will bless me, enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. Keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Now, in the first case, he was causing people pain. In the second case, he himself was suffering pain. Now, whether you are suffering pain or you are causing people pain, they are products of a curse. I don't know who is hearing me today. Wherever you are, Suffering pain, causing people pain, the blessing of God that terminates pain. May that blessing come upon you in the name of Jesus. How would a person cause pain when his labor is in vain? Oh, Peter toiled all night and he caught nothing. And the Bible says he was folding his net. Because the only thing he could do now is return home and tell his wife and tell his mother-in-law that there's no food for the table today. That is pain for a family. But when Jesus came to the boat, he said to Peter, throw your net onto this side. And Peter said, at thy word, I will cast the net. Luke chapter 5. And in verse 5, verse 6, verse 7, the Bible says, Peter cast his net and he caught so much fish that the net was breaking. What is the difference? The Peter who went to the sea without Jesus in his boat was a Peter carrying a curse. By the time Jesus came, a blessing came into that boat. Every curse of toiling in vain came to an end. I said to somebody today, because you are in the house of God, because you are hearing this message, Every cause of pain, everything you have been going through, every toil that has been in vain, there's a blessing that terminates pain. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says it is in vain to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. Some people go through sorrow all just because they want to help their family. But child of God, what makes the difference is a blessed life. It's not your struggle. It's not your toiling. It's not your hard work. Hard work is good. Labor is good. To work hard is good. But any labor that does not bring corresponding profit is, profit is not good. And so what do you need? The blessing. I pronounce that blessing upon somebody today in the name of Jesus. Now, who placed a curse upon Jabez? It was the mother. I may not know who placed that curse that is making you to go around like a fugitive 
like a vagabond, like a wanderer. And the earth is no longer yielding its increase. I may not know who placed that curse. You yourself may not know where that curse has come from. But when you look at your life, you realize that it looks like this is talking about me. I shared this same message in the first service. And a lady met me after the service. I said, Pastor, tears were just rolling on my eyes as we were talking. Because just this weekend, they were telling me this is the thing you need to pray for. He said, this is the issue of my family. I don't know who God is talking to in the second service. I don't know what you are going through that looks like there is a curse upon your life. That you relocated to New York doesn't mean you are free. Doesn't mean you are free. Cain was moving from place to place, but the curse was going with him. I pray today that every curse that has been going around with you, the blessing of God will terminate it. In Hebrews chapter 7, when you read in verse 7, the Bible says, without any contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater. What that is simply saying is, if somebody puts a curse upon you, someone in a higher authority can cancel it. And I stand in the authority of heaven. It doesn't matter where that curse has come from. That blessing of God that terminates curses will locate you in the name of Jesus. Go and read the story of Reuben in Genesis chapter 49. When you read in verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5, Jacob pronounced a curse upon his own son. He said, Reuben, my firstborn, the excellency of strength, the excellency of dignity, the excellency of power. He said, you will not prosper. He said, you will not excel. And why did he say he will not excel? He said, because he went into his father's bed. Oh, people of God, there's something you need to know about a curse. Bible says that a curse that is costless will not alight. Proverbs 26 verse 2. A curse that is costless will not do what? Will not alight. What that simply means is, if people pronounce a curse upon you, if you have never done them anything wrong, you've never done anything wrong, that curse cannot stick. Oh, give us the New Living Translation. He says in that Proverbs 26 verse 2, the New Living, he said, an undeserved curse will not land on his intended victim. An undeserved curse. We not do what? It will not land on his intended victim. It simply means if you have not done anything to deserve the curse, it will not land. Every time somebody is going to pronounce a curse, they must say why. What did you do? And so where Jacob was going to pronounce a curse upon Reuben, he said because he slept in his father's bed. Child of God, whatsoever error you have committed in life that has brought a curse upon you, the mercy of God deliver you. Amen. When God was going to put a curse upon Cain, he said because of his brother's blood. Are you listening to me? But when you read in Deuteronomy 39, 33, Deuteronomy 33, the Bible says in verse 1, and this is the blessing we are with Moses, the man of God blessed the children of Israel before his death. Then he got to verse 6. He said, let Reuben live and not die. Let not his men be few. In the New Living Translation, that verse 6 reads like this. Moses said this about the tribe of Reuben. Let the tribe of Reuben live and not die out. Though they are few in number. Now, it means the tribe of Reuben was already diminishing. But the blessing that Moses brought was to stop the curse that was already killing them in the tribe of Reuben. Why? Moses was standing in a higher authority as the spiritual father of the land that your earthly father Pronounce the curse on you. But I come to stand as your spiritual father. You will live. You will not die. 
you will shine as light. You will increase in life. Your toiling cease from today. In the name of Jesus. If you agree and you believe it, say better. Amen. Amen. Another example is Jacob. The Bible makes us to understand that God said concerning Jacob before he was born that his older brother will serve him. But when Jacob was born, he was holding the heels of his brother. And then the parents decided, this one shall be called Jacob. And Jacob simply means supplanter. And why did they say you will call Jacob? They said because he was holding his brother's heel. For every curse, there must be a cause. Are you listening to me? For every curse, there must be a cause. And the curse for which they were saying you because Jacob is you, I mean, Jacob touched the heel of his brother, held onto the heel, and they called him Jacob. And everywhere he went to, either he would defraud people or people would defraud him. Because what they pronounced on him was a curse, and that thing was speaking. In the house of Laban, they defrauded him and they gave him a woman he didn't bargain for. He had two wives without requesting for one. Am I talking to somebody? But the Bible tells us a day came that Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And the angel of the Lord said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. He said, you shall not be called Jacob. You shall be called Israel for you are a prince with God. Oh, what am I saying? The curse can cover who you ought to be until the blessing will come. But the day the blessing come, every garment that is cursed, that is covering you who you really are, that garment will be removed. Inside every Jacob, there is an Israel. I don't know what is manifesting right now that you are toiling and laboring and you are not getting results. I announce to you the blessing of God is removing that garment of toiling. Your Israel will appear. Your Israel will appear in the name of Jesus. What God has ordained for you will manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. Another example I will give you is the last born of Jacob. When this young man was given birth to, in Genesis 35, in verse 16, the Bible says they moved on from Bethel. While they were still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel began to give birth and had great difficulty. And as she was having great difficulty in childbirth, the midwife said to her, don't despair. For you have another son. As she breathed at last, for she was dying, she named her son Benoni. But his father named him, oh, everybody said Benjamin. Benjamin. Give us the amplified version of that verse 18. The amplified version. The Bible says, and as her soul was departed, for she died, she called his name Benoni, which means what? Son of my sorrow. But his father called him what? Which means what? Son of my right hand. Why did the father do that? I told you blessings come from places of higher authority. What the father was simply saying is, whatsoever covenant, pronouncement that my wife made, I have the authority to cancel it. I'm exercising that authority. Whatever you call this child, the woman had died, but the father canceled it. I will show you. Numbers chapter 30. Numbers 30 verse 6 to 8. Numbers 30 verse 6 to 8. Husbands don't know what their rights are. I'm talking about your rights in God. Your right is not to fight. Your right is to cancel what is not right. Am I talking to somebody? The Bible says, and if she had at, an, at all an husband, when she vowed or uttered anything out of her lips, where will she bound her soul? And her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vow shall stand. 
and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. Verse 8. But if her husband disallowed her, on the day that he heard it, then he shall make a vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. People of God, I stand as an husband over my wife. And I say whatsoever she had done in life that makes her to be deserving of a curse. I exercise my authority as a spiritual father, as a spiritual man, and as a husband. I say that curse is terminated. You carry a blessing from today. Am I talking to somebody? But the Bible says if the man keeps quiet, when the woman made that negative pronouncement, it will stand. It will stand. The Bible says, read that number 30. The Bible says, if the woman is not yet married and is living with her father and she makes a pronouncement, if the father keeps quiet, it will stand. But if the father said, no, this is not standing, then it will not stand. Am I talking to somebody? Oh, do you know Benoni is the son of Jacob? What Benoni was, what Jacob was saying about Benoni is, your mother called you Benoni, but I exercise the authority of a father. I exercise the authority of a husband to cancel what your mother said, and I'm exercising the authority of a father to pronounce a blessing upon you. I stand today as a spiritual father in this house. I don't care wherever they pronounce the curse upon you, and you have been toiling and laboring. You have been going around in circles. You have been moving around like a fugitive, like a vagabond. And the earth is not yielding as increase. I declare today that curse is terminated in the name of Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? Can you imagine? If Jacob didn't cancel Benoni, it would have been causing people sorrow. But Jacob said, this one is not Benoni. This one is Benjamin, the son of my right hand. Right hand means authority. Right hand means power. Right hand means excellence. This one will, be ex will excel. This one will succeed. Am I talking to somebody? But don't forget, Jacob himself cursed Reuben. They needed Moses to cancel it. Am I talking to somebody? And I say to someone today, by the mercy of the living God, even if it is your biological father who cursed you, there's a spiritual father who can bless you. There's an heavenly God who can bless you. And that blessing is yours today in the name of Jesus. Blessing is yours today. On Tuesday, I talked in this similar light. And I challenged parents. What we talked about on Tuesday, those who don't come for Bible study, they miss a lot. Was that parents should not allow their mouths to curse their children. Your mouths are meant to bless his children. And that when you curse them or you insult them, you just find out that it's going to come back in multiple fold. Please don't do it. No matter how irritated or how angry they have made you, don't do it. You have authority. Anything that comes out of your mouth will happen. It will happen. Don't joke about it. Don't call them negative names. Even if they are acting that way, prophesy blessings over their life. You are a good child. You are not a stubborn child. You are a successful child. You are an obedient child. You will obey your parents. You will serve them. You know, just pronounce positive things about them. And you'll be amazed how there will be a transformation. If you believe it, let your amen be better. Thank you, blessed Father. Let's go back to the Jabez story. In the case of Jabez, in that first Chronicles chapter 4, the Bible says he was more honorable than his brethren. More what? That is, what God intended for him is that amongst all his brethren, he will be the most honorable man. But because they have called him sorrow, instead of showing honor, manifesting honor, it was causing people pain. Are you with me? But the Bible makes us to understand 
when you read in verse 10, the Bible says, Jabez himself called on the God of Israel. Who called on the God of Israel? The reason is there was no spiritual father to come and help him. There was no pastor. There was no body of higher authority who can help him. And Jabez decided, if I wait for spiritual fathers, I will die in this sorrow. I will die in this pain. Now, maybe Jabez was already 40-something years old. You can imagine how many years he has been causing people pain. So he decided to cry to God. Now, he did not cry to the God of Jacob. He cried to the God of who? The reason is simple. Jacob was the name the father called him. But Israel is the name God called him. So the God he was calling upon is the God who had changed somebody's name from Jacob to blessing, to Israel. Who had changed curses and removed it and brought blessing. And he wanted that same type of miracle. So he was calling on the God of Jacob, I mean of Israel. Now, if I want fire to fall here, yeah, what name will I call God? The God of who? Uh -huh. you, are, you, are, you are very smart people. The God of Elijah, send down fire. Are you with me? Now, when you want blessings to come, whose God do you call? The God of? The God of Israel. You want that blessing to change. You want that curse to change to blessing. So he called on the God of Israel. And his request was simple. Oh, that you will bless me. You will enlarge my coast. Your hand will be with me. You will keep me from evil. And I will never cause people pain. And the Bible says, God granted his request. Whose request will be granted today? <laughs> Whose request will be granted today? Now, don't forget where we started from. You will know if you are carrying a curse. If the effort you are making is more than the result you are getting. You will know if you are carrying a curse. If you are toiling and toiling and you are not getting results. You will know you are carrying a curse. If somehow you are going around in circles. You are going around like a vagabond. You are going around like a fugitive, like a wanderer. You will know whether you are carrying a curse. And only those people I'm saying should cry to God. Maybe nobody has blessed you yet. Maybe nobody has pronounced the blessing to cancel the curse. But you can cry to God today. Stand up on your feet. <laughs> oh my God. You are here this morning. It looks like when pastor was talking about people who are going around in circles, laboring, and not getting results commensurate to their labor. It looks like it was me pastor was talking about. Come to the front. Come to the front. We don't need to beg you to do that. <laughs> it's up to you. It's up to you. I, I don't care wherever that curse has come from that is following you around. And it's not allowing your effort to turn into results. But there's a God in heaven that you can cry to. There's a God where? Lift up your voice and say, Father, bless me today. And remove every curse of toiling in my life. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Bless me today. Remove every curse of toiling that I'm carrying. Whatsoever is the curse of toiling that I am carrying today. Remove it. Remove it, oh God. Remove it. Remove it in the name of Jesus. Every curse of toiling, every curse. We have been toiling, we have been laboring. Bless me today, bless me, Lord. Remove every curse, remove every evil arrow. Whatsoever I have done, 
deserving a curse, mercy locates me. The mercy of God locates me today. The mercy of God locates me. The blessings of God that turns a vagabond, a fugitive, into a settled man, a settled woman, let those blessings locate me. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Job chapter 1. The book of Job chapter 1, verse 9 and verse 10. Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Has thou not made an edge about him, about his house, about all that he had on every side? Then he said, Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. The New Living Translation says of that verse 10, he said, you have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. You have made him prosper in everything he does. Look how rich he has become. Look how rich he has become. When the blessing comes upon a person, when the blessing of God comes upon you, even the devil will be jealous. Are you with me? What made the difference in the life of Job was that the hand of God was with him. And then the devil negotiated with God. You remove your hand and see whether Job will not curse God. And I say, God said, okay, I'll remove my hand. You go ahead. And the Bible says, in one day, everything that had been working well, calamity just came. Child of God, that you have a taxi that is bringing you money. It's because the hand of God is with you. Oh, that you have a truck that is fetching you gold, fetching you business. It's because the hand of God is with you. Whatsoever it is that we remove that hand. <laughs> you want to fight that thing. Now, it was Satan who was negotiating that the hand of God be removed from Job. So that he can see the other side of life. Lift up your hand and say, Father, every evil negotiation to remove your hand of blessing from my life, I counter it today. I refuse it today. I resist it today. I reject it today. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Every evil negotiation to remove your hand of blessing from my life, I resist it. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. Your hand will never be taken away. In the name of Jesus, you will bless me indeed. You will bless me indeed. You will bless me indeed. In the name of Jesus, you will bless me indeed. Your hand will be upon me. You will expand my tentacles. You will expand my frontiers. You will expand my territories. In the name of Jesus, me. I carry the blessing of God. Carry the blessing of God. I carry the blessing of God. I carry the blessing of God. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Now that you